Lostwithiel Plymouth Foy Cornwall and Lostwithiel The Battle of Lostwithiel took place over a 13-day period from 21 August to September 2, 1644. Around the town of Lostwithiel, and along the river Foy Valley in Cornwall during the First English Civil War. A royalist army led by Charles I of England defeated a parliamentarian force commanded by the Earl of Essex. Although Essex and most of the cavalry escaped, between 5,000 and 6,000 parliamentarian infantry were forced to surrender. Since the royalists were unable to feed so many, they were given a pass back to their own territory, arriving in Southampton a month later having lost nearly half their number to disease and desertion. Considered one of the worst defeats suffered by Parliament over the course of the Wars of the Three Kingdoms, it secured South West England for the royalists until early 1646. During April and May 1644, Parliamentarian commanders Sir William Waller and the Earl of Essex combined their armies and carried out a campaign against King Charles and the Royalist garrisons surrounding Oxford. Trusting Waller to deal with the King in Oxfordshire, Essex divided the Parliamentarian army on 6 June and headed southwest to relieve the Royalist siege of Lyme in Dorset. Lyme had been under siege by King Charles' nephew, Prince Maurice, and the Royalists for nearly two months. Southwest England at that time was largely under the control of the Royalists. The town of Lyme, however, was a parliamentarian stronghold and served as an important seaport for the parliamentarian fleet of the Earl of Warwick. As Essex approached Lyme in mid-June Prince Maurice ended the siege and took his troops west to Exeter. Essex then proceeded further southwest toward Cornwall with the intent to relieve the siege of Plymouth. Plymouth was the only other significant parliamentarian stronghold in the southwest, and it was under siege by Richard Grenville and Cornish royalists. Essex had been told by Lord Robarts, a wealthy politician and merchant from Cornwall, that the parliamentarians would gain considerable military support if he moved against Granville and freed Plymouth. Given Lord Robart's advice, Essex advanced toward Plymouth. His action caused Granville to end the siege. Essex then advanced further west believing that he could take full control of the southwest from the royalists. Meanwhile, in Oxfordshire, King Charles battled with the parliamentarians and defeated Sir William Waller at the Battle of Property Bridge on 29 June. On 12 July after a Royalist Council of War recommended that Essex be dealt with before he could be reinforced, King Charles and his Oxford army departed Evesham. King Charles accepted the Council's advice, not solely because it was good strategy, but more so because his Queen was in Exeter where she had recently given birth to the Princess Henrietta and had been denied safe conduct to Bath by Essex. On 26 July, King Charles arrived in Exeter and joined his Oxford army with the Royalist forces commanded by Prince Maurice. On that same day, Essex and his parliamentary force entered Cornwall. One week later, as Essex bivouacked with his army at Bodmin, he learned that King Charles had defeated Waller, brought his Oxford army to the southwest, and joined forces with Prince Maurice. Essex had also seen that he was not getting the military support from the people of Cornwall as Lord Robarts asserted. At that time, Essex understood that he and his army were trapped in Cornwall and his only salvation would be reinforcements or an escape through the port of Foy by means of the parliamentarian fleet. Essex immediately marched his troops five miles south to the small town of Lostwithiel arriving on 2nd of August. He immediately deployed his men in defensive arc with detachments on the high ground to the north at Restormal Castle and the high ground to the east at Beacon Hill. Essex also sent a small contingent of foot south to secure the port of Foy aiming to eventually evacuate his infantry by sea. At Essex's disposal was a force of 6,500 foot and 3,000 horse. Aided through intelligence provided by the people of Cornwall, King Charles followed westward, slowly and deliberately cutting off the potential escape routes that Essex might attempt to utilize. On 6 August King Charles communicated with Essex, calling for him to surrender. Stalling for several days, Essex considered the offer but ultimately refused. On 11 August, Granville and the Cornish Royalists entered Bodmin forcing out Essex's rearguard cavalry. Granville then proceeds south across Risperin Bridge to meet and join forces with King Charles and Prince Maurice. It is estimated that the Royalist forces at that time were composed of 12,000 foot and 7,000 horse. Over the next two days the Royalists deployed detachments along the east side of the River Foy to prevent a parliamentarian escape across country. Finally the Royalists sent 200 foot with artillery south to garrison the fort at Paul Ruin, effectively blocking the entrance to the harbour of Foy. At about that time, Essex learned that reinforcements under the command of Sir John Middleton were turned back by the Royalists at Bridgewater in Somerset. At 7 o'clock hours on 21 August, King Charles launched his first attack on Essex and the parliamentarians at Lostwithiel. 
From the north, Grenville and the Cornish Royalists attacked Restormal Castle and easily dislodged the Parliamentarians who fell back quickly. From the east, King Charles and the Oxford army captured Beacon Hill with little resistance from the Parliamentarians. Prince Maurice and his force occupied Druid Hill. Casualties were fairly low and by nightfall the fighting ended and the Royalists held the high ground on the north and east sides of Lustwithiel. For the next couple of days the two opposing forces exchanged fire only in a number of small skirmishes. On 24th of August, King Charles further tightened the noose encircling the Parliamentarians when he sent Lord Goring and Sir Thomas Bassett to secure the town of St. Blasey and the area to the southwest of Lustwithiel. This reduced the foraging area for the Parliamentarians and access to the coves and inlets in the vicinity of the Port of Par. Essex and the Parliamentarians were now totally surrounded and boxed into a two-mile by five-mile area spanning from Lustwithiel in the north to the Port of Foy in the south. Knowing that he would not be able to fight his way out, Essex made his final plans for an escape. Since a sea evacuation of his cavalry would not be possible, Essex ordered his cavalry commander William Balfour to attempt a breakout to Plymouth. For the infantry, Essex planned to retreat south and meet Lord Warwick and the Parliamentarian fleet at Foy. At three o'clock hours on 31st of August, Balfour and 2,000 members of his cavalry executed the first step of Essex's plan when they successfully crossed the river Foy and escaped intact without engaging the Royalist defenders. Early on the morning on 31st of August, the Parliamentarians ransacked and looted Lostwithiel and began their withdrawal south. At seven o'clock hours, the Royalists observed the actions of the Parliamentarians and immediately proceeded to attack. Grenville attacked from the north. King Charles and Prince Maurice crossed the River Foy, joined up with Grenville, and entered Lustwithiel. Together the Royalists engaged the Parliamentarian rearguards and quickly took possession of the town. The Royalists also sent detachments down along the east side of the River Foy to protect against any further breakouts and to capture the town of Paul Ruin. The Royalists then began to pursue Essex and the Parliamentarian infantry down the river valley. At the outset the Royalists pushed the Parliamentarians nearly three miles south through the hedged fields, hills and valleys. At the narrow pass near Street. Veep, Philip Skippon, Essex's commander of the infantry, counterattacked the Royalists and pushed them back several fields attempting to give Essex time to set up a line of defence further south. At 11 o'clock hours, the Royalist cavalry mounted a charge and won back the territory lost. There was a lull in the battle at 12 o'clock hours as King Charles waited for his full army to come up and reform. The fighting resumed and continued through the afternoon as the Parliamentarians tried to disengage and continue south. At 1600 hours hours, the Parliamentarians tried again to counterattack with their remaining cavalry only to be driven back by King Charles' lifeguard. About a mile north of Castle Doré, the Parliamentarians' right flank began to give way. At 1800 hours hours when the Parliamentarians were pushed back to Castle Doré they made their last attempt to rally only to be pushed back and surrounded. About that time the fighting ended with the Royalists satisfied in their accomplishments of the day. Exhausted and discouraged, the Parliamentarians hunkered down for the night. Later that evening under the darkness of night, Essex and his command staff stole away to the seashore where they used a fishing boat to flee to Plymouth, leaving Skippon in command. Early on 1st of September, Skippon met with his officers to inform them about Essex's escape and to discuss alternatives. It was decided that they would approach King Charles and seek terms. Concerned that parliamentarian reinforcements might be on their way, the king quickly agreed on 2nd of September to generous terms. The battle was over. 6,000 parliamentarians were taken as prisoners. Their weapons were taken away and they were marched to Southampton. They suffered the wrath of the Cornish people in rout and as many as 3,000 died of exposure and disease along the way. Those that survived the journey were, however, eventually set free. Total casualties associated with the battle were extremely high especially when considering those who died on the march back to Southampton. To those numbers as many as 700 parliamentarians are estimated to have been killed or wounded during the fighting in Cornwall along with an estimated 500 royalists. The Battle of Lustwithiel was a great victory for King Charles and the greatest loss that the parliamentarians would suffer in the First English Civil War. For King Charles the victory secured the southwest for the remainder of the war and mitigated criticism for a while against the royalist war effort. For the parliamentarians, the defeat resulted in recriminations with Middleton ultimately being blamed for his failure to break through with reinforcements. The parliamentarian failure at Lostwithiel along with the failure to defeat King Charles at the Second Battle of Newbury ultimately led Parliament to adopt the self-denying ordinance and led to the implementation of the new model army. 
Thanks for watching.